Salam everybody, it's Chelsea. So today I am going to finally be talking about hijab. So I've actually had a few questions in the past about how to go about answering why we wear the hijab to non-Muslims. A lot of the times, just walking on the street, maybe at work, maybe at university, somebody will just randomly ask you, why do you wear the hijab? And sometimes you could get tongue-tied and wonder, oh no, what is the right answer? Of course, you don't want to seem extreme and scare them off and just say, God says I have to wear it. You know, you don't want to say, oh, well, my family thinks that it's a good idea that I wear it. You don't want to give the wrong answer, so sometimes it's kind of difficult, spur of the moment, to really answer those types of questions. So what I've done today is I've gone ahead and I've written down a few questions that I think are mainly asked amongst non-Muslims to Muslims about the hijab, and I'm gonna try and answer them the best that I can with just some simple knowledge that I have and some, I guess, answers that I've kind of given in the past. Also, I'll give a little bit of an explanation on some of them as well, um, just to kind of further instruct you guys. You know, I always have these different thoughts and I can rationalize anything, um, you know. So for me, I feel like I really kind of understand hijab. Of course, I feel like that there are certain levels of hijab, um, you know, but in the sense of just, you know, me and in that middle path, that's kind of what I'm going to discuss here today. So I have the questions written on my cell phone, so don't mind if I keep looking down. The first question, and the one question that just really kind of twerks me, is does a man or your husband force you to wear the hijab? Now, first and foremost, we have to know that nobody can force anybody to do anything within Islam. This is wrong. What we decide to do as a practicing Muslim is what we decide to do. Yes, we may want to encourage others. We may want to give fellow Muslims dawah on why you should be wearing the hijab. But at the end of the day, we cannot force anybody to do anything. Now, this is not saying that there are not men out there who do that. Of course, there are going to be men out there that are going to force a woman to wear the hijab. But to be honest, this is a personality complex that is not exclusive to Muslims. There are Western men who will force their women to do certain things. Might not even be religious related. Um, you know, it could just be something very simple. But men sometimes feel like they need to be in control of something. And when you have a man who's passionate about his faith, but may be kind of negatively passionate about it, that occasion could happen where this man could force his wife to wear the hijab. But this is not right and this is not Islam. Now when it comes down to your father or your brother, you know, really trying to encourage you to wear it and maybe your father even slightly forces you to wear it, I think that depending on the age, I'm okay with that because I think that parents are there to help guide their children to doing things that are right and that are good for you. You know, even people here in the West, their parents will force them to do something that they may not want to do just because their parents know that it will be good for them. That is a parent's right. But again, nobody should be forcing anybody to do anything. So the answer for that question is basically no. Men are not allowed to force women to wear the hijab. Yes, there are differences in opinions of whether the hijab is mandated or not mandated, but I think the majority of sheikhs, imams, people who are very knowledgeable about Islam will clearly state that the hijab just defining it as wrapping a scarf around your head with your face and your hands exposed and all of your you know all of your skin covered modestly this is what is defined hijab 
in a sense. So, although it is mandated, no man, no person can force somebody into wearing it. Now, a lot of the times, there are men within families, husbands, brothers, fathers, that will probably, you know, maybe put a little bit of pressure on the women in the family to wear the hijab, because it does state in the Quran that the men will be accountable for their women's sins. If that, it's kind of a controversial um, verse, I'll put it here. But the men, if they do not advise their women that hijab is mandated and they do not encourage them to wear it, they could be punished more than we may be punished for not wearing it. So in that sense, I can understand where some men would be maybe a little overly encouraging about wearing the hijab to the point where it may seem forceful simply because they know that this is what's right and they don't want to take on the sin. You know, they want it, what's right for their daughters, they want what's right for their wives and their sisters, and it is their job, it is their Islamic duty to encourage the women and their family to become more pious Muslim women. So for that, if somebody ever asks you that question, hopefully I gave you a few quick tips on how to answer that question. Now. The second question that I seem to get a lot is, what is the difference between all of the styles? Now, we have our regular, you know, just hijab, where we're veiling our heads and we're just trying to dress modestly, covering our skin, only showing our hands and our face. There's also the niqab, there's also the burqa, um, there's also a lot of more moderate Muslims now who will wear the turban styles, um, you know, exposing their neck, or some women who are a little bit more modest will end up wearing the turtlenecks with the, the turban styles. Now, unfortunately, um, you know, Islamically, exposing your neck is, is not proper hijab. Now, I understand if you're starting to get into hijab and you're new to it and you're trying to become comfortable with it and maybe you work somewhere where you don't want to, you know, intimidate others with your newfound faith, you don't want too many questions to be, you know, risen that maybe you can't answer, um, you know, so sometimes the turbans for beginner hijabis, for beginner Muslims are great. I understand that it's very fashionable and it's really cool and I admit to wearing turbans exposing my neck a lot when I first started wearing the hijab but unfortunately this is not proper hijab so when you know maybe somebody like my mother says oh well you remember when you were wearing like those cute little turban styles and you were showing your neck and da 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 you know those are really cute i'll say to her yes they are really cute but if i decide to wear a turban now i will wear a turtleneck um, simply because i personally start to feel a little bit exposed now when my neck is showing um, you know of course there's differences when your hijab is just loosely done and maybe you see like this area here and then simply just having like the whole thing out but I get that a lot as well well how come you simply just cover your hair why don't you cover your face why don't you cover your eyes now for me in the studying that I've done there are a lot of hadiths that kind of go towards the fact that you should veil your faces Um, one example being that the Prophet's wives used to veil their entire faces so that they could not be recognized. I believe there is another hadith. I will try to find it and put it here.
um, stating that a, a woman should pretty much be totally veiled. Now, on other cases, some people will say that the practice of wearing niqab is not what is mandated, but it is an extra thing that you can do for piety purposes. If you feel that you are simply on that level with Allah to Allah and this is just something that you feel will build your Iman to the nth degree, then this is something that you personally choose to do. Now I have also heard from women who actually live over in countries where they mainly wear the niqab that some do say that it is a little bit culturally pressured. Many, many women in that area wear the niqab and they slightly feel that if they do not wear the niqab that they will get stares or maybe they will be looked down on simply because it is very culturally acceptable to wear the niqab. Now I understand a lot of Western women not wanting to wear it because th this already almost seems extreme to a lot of non-Muslims. So the fact of a woman totally being veiled could almost be scary to some Western people and that could make people feel uncomfortable. Now there are a lot of debates on whether the niqab or simply, you know, the scarf like I'm wearing now is mandated. Um, there's one video in particular that is actually a very nice, soft, you know, intellectual debate about niqab and just the simple hijab, the veiling of the head. Um, and it is in my Good Islamic Videos playlist. If you want to check that out, it is there. Um, I always recommend people to do their own research. Um, you know, you make up your mind to what you think is mandated. Um, you know, that is mainly the differences between all of those. Um, you know, if I am incorrect in any of this, I do apologize. I don't mean to give out false information. I'm simply telling you what I have learned and from all of my research that I have done. And I always try to answer the questions so that I'm not offending one side or the other. So hopefully I achieved that in that question. Um, the, another question is, how come some Muslim women wear it and how come some Muslim women don't wear it? Now, I got this a lot, especially with my mother. You know, she was kind of like, well, I see a lot of Muslim women who don't wear the scarf, you know, so why do you choose it? I even have a few Muslim girlfriends who choose not to wear the scarf. But if you were to ask them if it was mandated or not, if they knew that they should be wearing it, the majority of the time these girls will say, yes, I know that I should be wearing the hijab, but I am not personally ready. Maybe my iman is not high enough to feel like I could really dedicate myself to the hijab. The hijab, you know, it's not just a scarf. It is a lifestyle. It is a way of being because it's not simply about covering your hair or covering your skin. It's about your personality. It's, it's about being modest on the inside and on the outside. You have to be careful of the way that you speak to others. You have to make sure that you have this certain type of internal peace inside of yourself and also a motivation to know that the hijab is not simply something that you can wear one day and take off another. Um, I remember asking my friend Dima one time about, about the hijab because she was one of the only Muslim girls that I actually knew that really wore the hijab personally. And, you know, she kind of told me, um, you know, wearing the hijab, it, it's like marrying your scarf. Um, you know, you can't simply divorce it one day and then remarry it the next day. Now, no offense to the girls who do do that. I understand that everybody's situation is different. Um, you know, some women can't wear it sometimes. Um, some women, maybe they feel scared to wear it at work or maybe they're living somewhere where it might be kind of intimidating to wear it outside in public, maybe because of discrimination purposes. So for that, I understand. But the average Muslim woman, um, you know, I really feel that it is something that needs to be taken very seriously. Um, if you decide to wear it, I really suggest that, you know, you really know what you're getting yourself into. It's a beautiful practice. It helps build your iman. 
um, you know, and it just adds a level to, you know, your self-awareness and, you know, your religious practices that is just unchangeable by anything. Um, if you really do find that this is something that you really want to do, you find it beautiful, um, it makes you feel good. Um, for me personally, having been a model before and having, you know, lived my life exposing myself, thinking, oh, well, if you have it, flaunt it type deal. And now being conservative and modest and veiling my beauty, I feel more liberated than ever. You know, these fame and want to say that feminism is about getting naked, but it's not. Feminism is about being in control of who you are and your identity as a woman. And for me, my sexuality, my nudity, my breasts, that does not make me who I am. It does not make me a woman. How I act, who I am on the inside, how I believe myself to be, this is what makes me a woman. And to take control of my sexuality by covering myself and saying, you cannot look at me like that. I deserve respect. I am a God-fearing woman that will not go home with you. I will not flirt with you. You will not get my phone number at the end of the day. This, for me, is more liberating than putting on a mini skirt and high heels. Um, you know, I know that a lot of moms of converts probably will say, oh, well, I understand you converted, but you don't have to wear the hijab. I would politely say, but I do, and I choose to, if that's what you want. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Next question is, how do you know what is the right kind of hijab and what is the wrong type of hijab? Now, hopefully I kind of answered this question already when I was talking about the different styles of hijab. I really think that all Muslims, the first thing that we're told to do is educate ourselves. If we don't educate ourselves, we cannot educate other people. We cannot give dawah proper, properly if we do not educate ourselves. So for that, I always recommend that everybody does their own research. Everybody needs to read Quran. Everybody needs to read Hadith. Everybody needs to watch lectures. I don't care how much you think you know about Islam. You need to be educating yourself on a daily basis and at minimum on a weekly basis about your faith, whether it's something you've heard a million times or whether it's something that you're just learning about, you always, always need to educate yourself so that you can make up your own mind. It says in the Quran that we have our own mind, we have our own thoughts. Allah Ta'ala created us with a brain and with intellect so that we can make these decisions on our own. If something seems wrong, if something doesn't seem right, then use your own judgment on that. And if something seems right, it probably is right. For me, you know, the Hadith and the Quran and just, you know, listening to sheikhs that, you know, I somewhat trust in, in their knowledge and experience, you know, since, you know, they're considered sheikhs, they're considered scholars, you know, who am I to really debate with somebody who's been studying Islam, who's been studying the Quran and studying Hadith for almost their entire life or even years above years in comparison to just my last two years. Sure, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean that you can't question things. Of course you can question things. You can ask as many questions as you want. Allah Ta'ala wants us to ask questions. That's, that's the glorious thing about Islam is with every question you ask, there will be an answer and an understandable answer at that. No wishy-wash answers that just is based on faith, but factual answers. And that is something I've always admired about Islam, and that is actually one reason I converted. So for that, to know what is right and wrong is inside here. You have to decide that. And if you need guidance, then go to somebody who you trust, who you feel is more knowledgeable than yourself to maybe give you the answers. And always ask guidance from Allah to Allah, you know, during prayer, you know, and inshallah, he'll guide you correctly. Next question. Why does God ask you to wear it but, you know, not other religions to wear it. Now, this is actually somewhat incorrect. There is a passage in the Old Testament, and I'll put it here.
that actually states that a woman should veil herself. And if she chooses not to veil herself, that she should shave her head. Now, since shaving your head is dishonorable for a woman, she should simply veil her hair. Now, I know that many Christians will, you know, disregard this passage and say, oh, well, that was back then, and this is now, and, you know, it's much modern times now. We don't have to cover our hair. But nowhere in any of our books did God say, times will change so my word can change. You know, that's how I always think of it. You know, did Allah Ta'ala anywhere in our book say, well, you know, this might be how it is now, but, you know, in 2,000 years from now, you don't have to listen to it. I don't agree with that. You know, so for me, I don't say, oh, well, just my God wants me to cover. in the Torah, um, a lot of, you know, maybe older traditional um, Jews, they actually wear the scarves around their head. Um, you know, many women in Austria, um, you know, many women in Mexico who are Catholics, um, you know, they even at least cover their heads um, and their hair when they go to church, at least. Um, you know, so again, we always have to remember that our God is one. Um, you know, our God is the same God as the Christian God. Our God is the same God as the Jewish God. Um, our God is no different than any other God. And so therefore, it doesn't limit the covering of the hair, you know, on the head for women to just Muslims. But it also pertains to Christians and it also pertains to Jews. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, the next question is, do you believe that this was only set for that time, but not today? Now, I kind of went into that in the last question. Now, I know a lot of times, you know, nowadays, even Muslim people, even Muslim people, subhanAllah, will say, oh, you don't have to cover anymore. You know, it's modern times. You know, nowadays, nobody's covered. You know, if anything, people are getting more naked than ever. Like, really? Come on. Like, why? Why are you going to justify your vanity in that way? To say, to say that Allah at the Allah didn't know what he was talking about. That Allah at the Allah only commanded us to wear our scarves in that time period. No. I mean, like, I almost want to sit here and just be like, haram. Because that's not how it is. Our book, no matter what it is, the Quran is a life guide for all ages. Whether it was 20 years ago, whether it was a thousand years ago, whether it was today. And this is what we fight with all the time with non-Muslims. Non-Muslims want us to be progressive. Non-Muslims want us, wants us to be more moderate. They want us to be modern because wearing the hijab is looked at as fundamentalism, something extreme, you know, something that, you know, is a, a set way of doing something in a religion that's negative. In fact, this is empowering. This is, this is a beautiful act of worship to know that every day that you dress modestly and every day that you veil yourself properly, you are pleasing your creator. You are giving yourself more of a chance for blessings and reward and happiness. And I'm sorry if you're one of those hijabis who feel very uncomfortable and maybe out of your body wearing the hijab. I might have to bring that back to your iman. Do you pray? Are you happy? How is your life? How is your family? Do you love? Do you have a good support system? How are your friends? Where do you live? All of these answers can be, be combined into why you're feeling the way that you're feeling. But just because we're in modern times does not mean that we disobey Allah Ta'ala's commandments. So inshallah, you know, everybody can kind of take into account that, you know, this, this isn't something that should be changed simply because it's 2013. I wear the hijab now. Many other beautiful Muslimas wear the hijab now. And they won't state that they want to take it off because it's modern times. 
they understand that this is a commandment of Allah regardless of the time period. Oh, actually, this is a bonus question because I had a young girl um, email me the other day about this and, uh, you know, I just thought that it was a question that needed to be discussed because um, on my meetup on a, what was it, Sunday with the girls at Cheesecake Factory, which was so much fun, we actually slightly brought up this topic. Nowadays, more than ever, you are seeing many, many Muslim girls coming over to America from Muslim countries and removing their hijab. One, because maybe they're in fear. Two, simply just because they think that they can. And for that, I don't understand. I understand the fear thing. If you're coming over here, you know that, you know, a lot of Americans kind of discourage, you know, against Islam and, you know, discriminate against Muslims, unfortunately. You know, I can understand coming from a Muslim country, a Muslim nation, and then coming here and wondering how it will be, you know, you as a hijabi in this country that you think hates Muslims. But please, I am an American and I've lived here for, you know, I'll be 27 in December. And America is great in the sense that it is a melting pot of everything. There is cultures beyond cultures here. There are towns that are named after countries. You know, there's Chinatowns in, in uh, New York City. There's Chinatowns in uh, California, all over the place. San Francisco, LA. There's little Italy and San Diego where I used to live. America is used to things that are different because that is what America was based on. America was based on immigrants. America was based on different cultures, different ethnicities, and different religions. Now, yes, of course, the main religion within America is Christianity, but everywhere you go, you see Muslims, unless you were just in a small town or you're in like a highly Christian populated area. But no matter where you go, you're going to see a Muslim. Just like I told this young girl the other day when I went to the meetup on Saturday with the, with the girls, everywhere I turned there was a hijabi. Maybe they were in different styles, maybe they were wearing different clothes. Some hijabis wear skinny jeans, some, some hijabis wear abayas, some hijabis wear beautiful silk scarves. You know, you can kind of tell, you know, where different people are from in the way that they kind of wear their hijab sometimes. But there are hijabis everywhere, there are Muslims everywhere. And the thing is, is that you can't be fearful. You just have to be proud of who you are in knowing that you are representing Islam, that you are representing a creation of Allah Ta'ala. You have to be proud of who you are and you have to be confident. If you are not confident in who you are and what you look like, then you're never going to succeed in life in general. Confidence goes beyond just, you know, thinking you look good. Confidence is, you know, how you speak, your intellect, you know, how you feel about yourself, how you present yourself in front of others. This is all confidence. And for me personally, I can't imagine a young girl coming over here from a Muslim country and deciding to take off her hijab simply because it's the West and it'll be okay. It won't be okay. It won't be okay in your soul. It won't be okay in Judgment Day. And it's not okay with Allah Ta'ala. Because Allah Ta'ala's commands do not change by geography. It doesn't matter where you are. Being a Muslim is being a Muslim. And the Quran is the Quran and Hadith are Hadith. And the commandments of Allah Ta'ala do not change. And so for that, I just have to say thank you for always watching my videos. I love the support that I get from you guys. It's really, really amazing. I'm happy that when I needed people within Islam, you guys were always there to support me. And so I think I am just emotional in general <laughs> right now. So inshallah, you enjoyed the film and it allowed you to learn and grow maybe as a Muslim. And until next time, adios. <laughs>